Steve Lundeen, cats have nine lives. Yes. So you've created nine lives. Let's pick out a couple of those, though. Yes. Well, my favorite's uh, life number four, real provocation, uh, which is, uh, you know, it means, it means letting the world, when it comes at you, uh, provoke you so that you kind of get outside of your standard routines and maybe move to something that's a little bit unusual. And the mind is really interesting because when it comes upon something that it needs, an idea that it needs or can use, it immediately identifies it and brings it back. It's just you have to force it out of its normal routine sometimes to see those things. And provocation is like that. So anything that happens uh, to you can be used as a provocation or you can provoke yourself by making things happen. You call that juice the jam. Well, juice the jam is one big one. Yeah, it's like uh, whatever happens is material. You know, something, a cell phone goes off in my seminar, or the, somebody comes in and pours water and ice in the glasses and it clinks and clanks. I used to get all tight about that, you know, and worry about it. Now I, I juice it. I try to find the energy in it. I mean, everybody's heard it anyway, you know. There's no secret to it, and it's already happened. So make the most of mistakes is what you're saying. Yeah, absolutely. You also say, though, that uh, you're going to fail one way or the other. Yeah, it's, it's, it's necessary. It's so, how we learn. <laughs> <laughs> and early yeah. failure is better? Well, yeah. You've just, uh, just identified two of the lives. Uh, you know, live uh, six is, is how fascinating, you know, is, which should be a response to things that go wrong so that you get the learning out of it. And uh, rapid prototyping or, or uh, you know, failing well, failing early, that's about trying to get your failures early. You know, you, since you know you're going to have them, why not front end load? <laughs> <laughs> you have lots of examples of that. Yes. One of the examples is, uh, comes from IDO, where they use, um, they've, they've created a film, The Deep Dive, by the way, which is commercially available. And it, it goes through a week where they're asked to build a shopping cart, an innovative shopping cart. And during that week, they, they must make uh, 30 prototypes of the shopping cart coming together at the end of the week with all the cameras rolling with an innovative design. But, you know, the, the prototypes are designed just to kind of get the discussion going and get focused and, you know, you know you kind of winnow out, you know, weed out the ones that don't work. And at the end, you know, you've got all your failures early. You come to the end, you've got success. You've also got examples in your book of things do go wrong but mm -hmm. how to fix them. Um, like uh, if someone's late for work on a regular basis the executive there meets them at the door yeah and greets them yes how you doing great to see you that's an actual example that's that's, that's an example that that actually happened you know just kind of it's sort of kill them with kindness it's like uh, how you doing glad you're here you know but, but seriously you know glad glad you're here we uh, really can use your services here we're dependent upon what you do and uh, and they'll never late again uh, well maybe once more <laughs> greeted at the door once more you know with a smile uh, not a cynical smile, which is kind of hard to pull off sometimes. <laughs> so you, you see that every company needs to do it, but you say also that it's the people within the company, not the organization itself. Well, just, you know, fundamental, all, all innovation is personal. Uh, personal first, organizational second. You know, an organization does nothing, doesn't really even exist except on paper. But it's the people, and we really just need to be clear in our language that, you know, if we're going to have innovation in an organization, we can work at it by helping our people become more innovative, or better said, helping our people find the innovative part of themselves because they all have it. And that's the way you bring the cat wrangler into it. Well, the cat wrangler has a role, the leader has a role, but the leadership style has to be a little bit different. The leadership style with uh, cats, or human beings working on their innovative self, has to be a little more, uh, provide a little more freedom and be a little more, uh, more of encouragement and less direction. Kind of leaving some space for, for a person to move in because you call it creative space, call it whatever, but the cat wrangler is important. It's an important task of a cat wrangler or a leader, as we say. How did you come from fish to cat? I've been dragging the cat along, around for a long time. Uh, it's been actually been a lifelong project, and I don't know how many metaphors I've gone through trying to organize this uh, this information. And it actually was the cat wrangler I saw at IDEO when I was there filming. Um, you know that that caused me it caused me to think. You know, cats have nine lives. But curiosity killed the cat is the thing we pass around most. I got to thinking, why do we do that? Because, you know, nobody's ever seen one die of curiosity. <laughs> what do we do that? And I said, it's to keep us in place. You know, it's a part of our culture. It's a part, you know. So that's why I chose cats. Cats are curious. and uh, Cats have nine lives. And they also carry a phrase around. That's part of what I built into my challenges. And if we don't move on, if we don't become innovative, we run into all sorts of difficulties because we don't move on at all. 
Yes. And you've introduced there, for example, your, your voices of authority. Authorities in the field. We, we took that out of a list of hundreds. It's amazing, you know. I grew up uh, going to graduate school and doing statistics with a mechanical calculator. It was like a slot machine. You know, you did your regression analysis by pulling the, pulling the lever. Um, and while I was in graduate school, uh, it was replaced with a digital. And it was just like, wow, what happened to all those mechanical machines that are now totally useless? And what happened to the company that made them? And so one of the ways that an organization deals with that, deals with its own, you know, the fact that it's probably going to, at some time or another, you know, some of its, some of its products and services are going to wear out and have to be replaced. What do you do? Well, the answer is you attack yourself. You don't let the competition attack you. You set up a group that tries to put inside your company that tries to put you out of business. And if they do, then you've probably got a better product and you've got it before your competition. So that's, that's one of the provocations uh, at work.